In this video, I'm going to quickly show you how you can install ChatGPT directly inside your Excel desktop. So the first thing you have to do is to obviously go into your Excel on your desktop. And for this to work, you have to sign into your Microsoft account. So I'm going to hit sign in and then you get this pop up over here. First, you might have a student account if you go to university, college or any other organization or you are working. So then you have your work account. And because I have access to both of these, I'm also a student, but I also work part time as a digital marketing analyst. I can let you know that we are going to be using add ins inside Excel and for this when I used my student account inside Excel, I got this pop up over here that you see on my screen that my organization was simply not allowing me to install any add ins. This really depends on your organization. So maybe your university allows this, but for me, it didn't work. So then I looked inside my work account and for that it worked perfectly fine. Generally, this shouldn't be a worry for you. Most of the organizations allow this. So just make sure to log in with your credentials inside your Excel to get started. So I'm going to do it right now. So right now when I'm logged into my Microsoft account, I'm going to go and create a blank workbook. The first thing you want to do in Excel is to go into insert and we are going to be using something called add-ins. I'm going to click on get add-ins over here. A store like this is going to show up and right now here's where you are actually going to see whether the organization allows you to get add-ins. Most of the accounts actually allows you to add add-ins. Now what you want to do is to search for ChatGPT for Excel and you just simply add it with this button. You then click on continue with the terms and just like that you successfully added this add-in inside your excel what you can see is that you have a new icon over here so if i close this you can always open it up if you click on it and then you get a welcome notification and right now what you have to do is that you have to generate api key on your open ai account and then paste it over here so i'm going to quickly show you how you can easily do that you simply go to openai.com you either create an account with sign up or you log in i'm going to log in and then you choose api and then here you can go into your profile and for this you simply have to click on view api keys you can see i already have some for my zapier ai automations but here i'm simply going to create a new secret key i'm going to name it excel i'm going to create secret key and right now i have to simply just copy this key i'm going to delete it after this video so you don't have to try this it's not going to work and then what you simply do is that you are going to paste the api key inside this box you then click on save and then you get a notification congratulations your api key has been successfully saved now you also get all the functions that you can use with this add-in over here but as you can see i'm going to just type ai dot and nothing comes up and i found out that this is sometimes happening when you're installing this add-in so what i would recommend you to do is to simply restart your excel and then it should work fine and then when you open and reload your excel it should work so if i type equal and ai you can see i get all the functions down here now if it still doesn't load for some reason the next thing you can do is to go to insert get add-ins then you go to my add-ins and you click on the three dots over here and you can remove it and repeat the process another thing you can do is to open the add-in so if I click on this one you can see I have this information button over here and I click on it you can click reload and it's going to reload the add-in once again and then last thing what actually worked for me I put the API key in and then I simply went and saved this file as and I saved this new file with the connection to ChatGPT. then when I click on my file over here and open the Excel once again, the functions were working perfectly fine. All right, so right now when you are ready to be using the functions, I'm going to quickly show you what the functions can do. So you can kind of get an idea about what you can use this for. All right, so the first function is called AI Ask. So as you can see, when I type in AI, I get all the functions. So let's go with AI Ask. You can see that I can define multiple inputs. So in this case, I have a prompt over here. Solve this two plus two is equal to what? So this function is a chat GPT function that is going to answer all your prompts. So if you have a prompt written over here, you can just firstly put the prompt as the first input and then you can simply just close the brackets and then you can see that the answer is shown immediately. Now, as you can see, this was a very simple example, but this function is actually super helpful because you can also add second variable called value as you can see in the function over here. So here, just to save time, I'm going to use my own prompt that I use for code interpreter as well as notable plugin. So if I scroll down, I'm going to go and use the basic sentiment categorization 
visualization for a textual column. So I'm going to copy this one and go back to my Excel because in this case, I thought that this prompt would be helpful, not just for Code Interpreter and Notable, but here when we are using the ChatGPT add-in as well. So I'm going to paste this prompt over here. And as you can see, the prompt is saying, you are a data scientist, determine the sentiment of these specific sentences, categorize the sentence to having either positive, neutral, or negative sentiment. And so what I can do right now is to just type AI ask. And as you can see, we are going to put our prompt the same way as we did the first time over here. So I'm going to put it, but because we are going to be dragging this down, I have to lock the cell. So I'm going to lock the cell with the dollar sign. And then depending whether you use commas or semicolons in your Excel as a separator, you type that down, I use semicolons, and then you are able to use another value over here. And that is going to be our review in this case. So I'm going to choose this cell over here, close the brackets, hit enter. And after a few seconds, we got the results. So based on our prompt, ChatGPT categorized the review correctly. So this one says, I really enjoy this tour. The only thing I have to do is to drag this all the way down. And because we locked the cell, you can see the prompt is used on all of these rows. So here, this one is neutral. I think it could be better, but it was okay. And this was horrible. You can see that this is negative. So here, I wanted to show you that you don't necessarily have to just use prompts inside your Excel, but you can also add secondary variable, your values, and depending on what kind of prompt you have, you can do a lot of stuff with this function. All right, so let's go with the second function. This time we are going to be looking at AI.list. So here I'm going to choose AI.list. I also have written my prompt over here, so I can just put the prompt and then close the brackets. And here, what you can see is that it's going to list 10 different tech lines for my ChatGPT for Excel, Microsoft Excel app. And so here, based on your prompt, it's going to create a list. And the great thing Thing about this is that it's not going to put it into one cell but it's going to separate it into different rows as you can see over here so right now because this wouldn't be that helpful to have it just inside one cell you can see that this function allows you to create a list that is going to be separated on different rows now again i'm going to show you a different way how you can use this function you can also define multiple variables once again so here i'm going to type ai.list and instead of choosing just one prompt i can define a task which is going to be basically what I want to do. So in this case, I want to list nine job description requirements for Salesforce administrator role. Then I define other variables that I want to let ChatGPT know about. And in this case, I'm writing down the technological skills that are required. And then I also write soft skills that I would want to include in this ad. And so what you have to do is to just simply choose all the cells at once that are written in this format, and then simply just close the brackets, hit enter. And then because the list function is used, you get the output on different rows. And and in this case, you can see we get nine different requirements for this job. So we have design, develop and maintain Salesforce applications and solutions, monitor and troubleshoot Salesforce system performance and so on. All right, so let's go with the second function, which is super helpful because it's helping you with formatting. Here, let's say that I have this date column over here and I would like to change this to have the same format. And here I'm going to just create a new column called format. And here you can Google this or you can be very specific of what kind of format you want. So GPT is going to to recognize this and then turn all of your dates into the same format. So in this case, I'm being very general here. I'm writing that I want to turn this into ISO date. This is a standard format for dates. I'm going to drag this all the way down and then I'm going to create a new column over here called output and we are going to be using AI.format and then you simply firstly choose the value. So that is going to be your date. Then you put your separator and then you put your format over here. You close the brackets, hit enter and after a few seconds, you get the format. So right now what you can do is that you can just simply drag this down and as you can see all the dates are in the same format and right now i'm going to show you more examples to get you inspired so in this case you could also do the same stuff for the currency we have a list of currencies on this side and then we have the format we want to use again you can use any format over here i'm simply interested in the codes of this currency so i'm going to type ai.format and i'm going to choose the value of the currency separator format i want to use close the brackets and then i get the code of the currency I can once again drag it down or just simply double click on it and then you can see that it automatically gives me the codes for the specific currencies. Now another example could be numbers. So maybe you have a list of different numbers that are in different format. So we are going to hit AI format and then the first thing is again the number then semicolon and then I'm going to choose international format. I then close the brackets. I get the output once again and it gives me all the numbers in the international format 
format starting with the plus sign. Now I'm going to quickly show you the fourth function that you can use. This one is very powerful. What you can do is that you can use ChatGPT to fill in the missing values. And as you might know, missing values are very important to handle when you are analyzing data or working with spreadsheets. So here in this case, we have countries over here and then we have a region column. And let's say that we would want to fill in the necessary regions for that specific country. So I'm going to search for AI.fill. And in this specific prompt, the first variable is example. So you have to have a few rows of the example Examples. And this is because you want to train ChatGPT so it knows how to fill out the missing values. So you want to highlight the example that you currently have for a few rows. So ChatGPT right now is going to know that in this case we have the first column country and then we have region that we are trying to fill in. And then you put your separator and you are going to go and fill in the list of values that you want to fill out the other information for. And I close the brackets. And when I hit enter, just like that, you can see that it puts it automatically on different rows as well for you. So you don't have to even drag it down. Now, remember that you can use this for multiple columns as well. So once again, I type AI.fill. I'm going to give ChatGPT example. So I'm going to have country, region, and currency as well. And I'm going to highlight all the cells of the examples. I then go separate it. And then I use the list of the countries over here. And then I close the brackets, hit enter. And as you can see, the the information is automatically filled out for both of the columns. Now the next function you can use is translate. So in this case, we have different words that we would want to translate into these languages. So here, what you want to do is to go and search for AI.translate. You firstly have the value. So that is going to be your word that you want to translate. You click on it, then you use your separator and then you choose the language you want to translate it into. You close the brackets, hit enter. And just like that, we got it translated automatically for us. You can just drag it down and then you get all the words translated into the languages that we wanted. Now, remember, you don't have to necessarily do this just for words you can do it for sentences or you can even type email inside excel and then directly translate it so in this case for example we have different taglines once again i can go ai translate i'm going to firstly choose the value then the second is going to be the language close the brackets right now i got it for one so if i just double click on it it's going to translate all the taglines for me automatically and so here i don't have to copy all the taglines inside chat gpt so this is how you can quickly translate stuff if you want to have it on separate rows all right so the six function that you can use inside Excel. It's going to be super helpful because you're going to be able to extract stuff from different cells. So in this case, I have different sentences over here. And as you can see, they are very cluttered and there is a lot of information here. Maybe you have similar data set and so you don't have to specifically extract them in Power Query, for example, but you can use the extract function. So in this case, we are going to search for AI.extract. And in this case, we have two variables over here. The first one is the value. So that is going to be the cell that you want to extract from. And then you can type whatever you want to extract. So ChatGPT is going to look at the text. And so it's clever enough to decide, for example, what is email because you know emails have add sign and they also add with dot something. So in this case, it's going to be able to recognize it and extract it. So then I just choose email, close the brackets, hit enter. And just like that, we didn't have to put this in Power Query. We could just simply extract this using ChatGPT. Once again, I can just double click or drag it down. And then it's going to extract the emails from all all the cells in that specific row. So ChatGPT knew that the add sign was in the emails, so then it extracted all of them. And now just remember that ChatGPT is clever enough to even extract something that not necessarily has a certain format like email with the add sign and .com. Here I have example of different leads and everything is inside one cell. The countries are mixed in different places, so this would be kind of hard to extract. So you can just once again go and use the extract function. The first one is going to be the value you want to extract from then your separator and then you type whatever you want to extract so in this case i'm going to go with the country i'm going to close the brackets hit enter and as you can see it extracted germany successfully and so if i drag this all the way down you can see that all the countries have been successfully extracted from all the cells in that specific row now if you're interested in chat gpt other plugins code interpreter data analysis and maybe even ai automations in zapier then definitely check out the first link in the description where you are going to find a lot of free resources that I put together that are no junk straight to the point prompts that I create and store inside my database can be found there as well if you enjoyed this video or if you learned anything new please give this video a thumbs up if you're interested in more chat GPT data analysis code interpreter or even AI automations then definitely subscribe down below because I post every single week thank you so much and have a great day